It's very nice to be here with you today, Michael. I have a few questions for you. So, have you always known that you wanted to be a gardener? Um, to be honest, no, it's not. I can't claim that I have. It wasn't. A, I can't say it's a real vocation. But uh, after being here for forty years, I've invented a sort of a narrative that ex explains why yeah. there seems to be a sort of continuity, uh, and that's because I was brought up in a in Mid Sussex, which is a quite a scenic county. Mm -hmm. in comfortable circumstances and visiting gardens was just a normal part of family life. Wow. So um, something must have um, stuck. Yeah, particularly um, my sense of aesthetics I think mm. because I, I place aesthetics so highly in my list of objectives. I don't think most gardeners do necessarily. They should. Maybe they should do. Yeah. Um, but uh, when I, I was appointed to the um, the panel, choosing a new head gardener at St Hughes a couple of years ago, and I suggested to the garden fellow there um, the one basic question I would ask of every candidate was what was their main objective in gardening? And I expected any self-respecting gardener to say, well, to create a a place of beauty, you know. Yes. And uh, none of them <laughs> said that. <laughs> One of them actually said um, his main objectives would be to avoid getting complaints about the garden, <laughs> 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 which I hadn't thought of it from that point of view. I must no, admit. Michael, you wrote a, a book. Well, not a book. Uh, you wrote a book, but I'll come to that later. But <laughs> you wrote a chapter on the history of the college and the garden in the book about the college and. I was wondering if you could share with us a bit about the history of the garden. When was it established and in what style? Yeah. And, um, what, is, and what is still visible? I'm what is still visible, yeah. Well, I mean, one of the uh, pleasures of having been in the same place for such a long time is it's, I've had the opportunity to research. Yes. And um, all the, the records of the Radcliffe Trust uh, were, have been deposited in the Bodleian Library. Right. So when I was researching this uh, chapter on the history of the gardens, it shed a lot of light on you know how it developed, and um, it's so interesting because it although it's um, a unique university institution, nonetheless uh, the grounds that uh, sat around the mm -hmm. the building, the observatory, were laid out in the in the prevailing style of the time, which was the landscape movement, right. which was a sort of a naturalistic style. Yeah. Um, a bit like uh, Rousham House. A little bit like that, yes. Yes, and in fact you could, you could, in that respect, perceive the observatory as a sort of a garden structure. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although, the, yes, it is the main objective. Um, and the, the college garden still contains elements of that original garden. So the main garden just outside here, right, yeah. all the curved paths uh, were laid out in the early 1800s. Um, and they give it this um, informality. I mean, gardeners often contrast the sort of symmetrical garden, the formal garden, yes. with the informal one with, cur with curves. I mean, it's a very sort of oversimplistic way of looking at it. No, but it is. It is yeah, not so rigid. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, and although the, the original grounds, which were much more extensive on the south side of the observatory... Yes, you once showed me an image of that. Yeah. It's quite impressive. Yeah. Um, they've, they've all been lost, but nonetheless, there's still the character um, that's inherited from yeah. those original, from the original layout, yeah. And, and what was the garden like when you arrived here as the head gardener? Um, 
Well, I was in the fortunate uh, position of taking on a garden that was, uh, I don't like to say this uh, in, with respect to my predecessors, but it was a bit dilapidated or a bit run down, shall we say. Yeah. So almost anything that I did was an improvement. That's so I had a lot of compliments good, about it. Good position <laughs> to be in. <laughs> yeah. And, and what have you kept and what did you change? Did you keep anything from um, the... so A few things. I think probably um, if you looked at the plants in their totality, probably 95% of what's in the garden now are things that I planted. Wow. Um, which doesn't say so much for my planting as for the sort of paucity of what was here to start with. You know. <laughs> so you changed a lot of the plants, 95% of the plants. And what, what's the oldest plant in the garden? Uh, I think the oldest... Uh, living thing is probably the mulberry tree in the in the kitchen garden in as kitchen was, gar yeah, 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 which is delicious in summer. Yeah, it is. It is a it is a, a feature. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I didn't have to get rid of ninety percent of the plants. The, the fact was that there were a lot of the borders that have been created in the garden were created because of the the fact that it was becoming it had become a college garden. Mm. So this, for example, the border just outside the window here, mm -hmm. that didn't exist at the start. It was mainly lawn. It was, that was just lawn, yeah. but it was natural to create the points of greatest interest where in the, by the paths that were most frequented. I think that was my sort of rule of thumb. Yeah. And where do you get your inspiration from when you decide on what to plant where? Sometimes I start from... Uh, uh, relying on any number of ideas. I, I don't typically get one idea and then just hone that. I might think of, uh, you know, thinking of any number of different plants uh, that I might plant and then something clicks, seems to click. Um, I think my ideas have probably become more, um, it sounds a bit pretentious, but to say they're more educated. For example, this border out here, which has varied over time from just bedding plants to we yeah, created an that. astronomical garden. Were yeah. you around when that was? Yes, I yeah. was. Yeah. yeah, and then we had a heraldic garden. That was quite a, was that was around, quite, yeah. that was quite a challenge to do. Yes. And uh, this time, well, the, it makes it sound as if it's ephemeral, but this time we've turned it into a garden of ancient Greece. So there are... Um, structural elements actually that came off the building, some code stone fragments that are uh, used as sort of parts of the rockery. Yeah. And just very recently, only a couple of weeks ago, we, I had ordered a Corinthian capital to... To, to go there. Yeah, to, to reflect the um, Vitruvius's explanation for the origins of the Corinthian order. Which was? Which was that... Um, a lady from Corinth placed a basket unknowingly on an acanthus plant and the leaves grew up around her basket ah. and a passing architect supposedly thought that would make a rather nice uh, new uh, order of classical architecture. <laughs> <laughs> well he didn't think that but I mean that's how it that that's is how by reputation about. how it was uh, that's yeah. how it came to be explained. You worked here now for 40 years and, and, you know, there must have been, like any place, a lot of highs and some, some downs. What, what were the high points in your career here? Um, I don't know I can identify individual events or elements so much as, um, I mean, I think gardening is something that you try to achieve a, a state of equanimity, you see. <laughs> so you're in a, a state of good humour and you're not, you try not to be put out by things. Yes. I mean, essentially, the college has given me, or I've uh, decided I've got it anyway, a lot of autonomy in my yes. job. I have uh, noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I did find it, well, I think when I'd been here for about 15 years, I found that it seemed like a very small world mm -hmm. and I wanted to do something more. So my solution to that was really to 
to set myself a personal challenge, which mm -hmm. was to get involved in doing some teaching, mm. uh, which I was completely alien to my um, personality, really. I'm a very you know, shy, retiring person, right. naturally. Yes, and yes, I wanted to uh, develop a side of me that uh, was more publicly engaged. Is it also on the back of doing that teaching that you published a book on the college gardens? Um, what do you mean, the, uh, writing about other college gardens, yeah. you mean? Well, I, haven't, I had uh, oh, oh, a long time... was that before that? A long time ago, um, in fact, when Lawrence Lever was here as a student, uh, he started producing a sort of a student mag. And uh, I don't know if he asked me, but anyway, I started sm submitting little articles about other college gardens. Okay, and then that book is the compilation yes, of the college right, gardens. Yes, that's right, yes. Right. Yeah. So, so what I noted when I looked at that is that you highlight um, several of the college gardens and the delights and their problems. Um, but G the GTC garden is not mentioned. It's only the observatory and the eating and drinking there is mentioned. So maybe this is a good moment to set the record straight and tell us what makes the gardens of GTC unique. Because, you know, you tell us in Not Observations of September <laughs> 1997 that most gardens contain the same plants. Yeah. Well, it's, it's one of these... Um I mean, it's sort of a, it's almost like a contradiction in terms saying that because, um, but essentially what I meant by it was that if you visit, if, if you go and visit another college garden, probably the, the contents of it in terms of the plants are not so different from this no. or any other college garden. But so it's what just makes it the way, different? well, it's the way you organize them. Um, I mean, I, uh, I came up with a sort of uh, an analogy with writing. So that uh, if you if you plant things completely randomly, you have a, com a meaningless aesthetic statement. So yes. you have to organise your planting in such a way that you make cohesive uh, statements by uh, combining plants that, for reasons of colour or form or leaves or whatever, go together nicely. Um, and then the garden as a whole is a combination of these different elements which not only have to combine at a sort of a small level but they should uh, combine at the, this in the space. Yeah. Um, so there are, uh, I mean I could explain the garden standing in, fr in front of different in places, different, different views to say why it, why it is balanced. But yeah. it, most of these things are just taken in Anybody walking into the garden would form an impression. They wouldn't try and analyse it no. and see how it works. But it, no. I think but they it would recognise it as there something there. To it. Yeah. Yes. Are there, you know, in, in addition to all the similar plants to other college gardens, do we have any unusual plants of flowers here? Um, well, I'm sure we do. Uh, I'll grab this thing here. This is a conservatory plant called Albizia. Uh huh. Lafantha, which comes from Western Australia, and as you can see, this is just a seedling. Um, it has, if I tip it out, let me tip it out for you. This is this, this could probably this will probably go horribly wrong, but essentially, it's got I'm, I'm rather unpleasantly smelly roots Eesh. because it's <laughs> it's it's ni it's nitrogen fixating or fixing or something, so it gives off ammonia in its roots. It does stink. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but apart from that, it's, it has a lot of good, good qualities. <laughs> What's your least favourite plant, Michael? Um, well, uh, I'm not really supposed to, s to say this sort of thing, but actually I think the dandelion is probably... Really? Yeah. They're so pretty. Uh, not really. I mean, uh, uh, when I see a seed head of a dandelion I just know. about to blow... and You uh, think in, ten years of weeds. <laughs> yeah. So I did get them almost under control maybe five years ago. What happened? Um, well, I, I acquired an assistant who's quite keen on uh, wildflowers, you see, so I can't, uh, I just can't get away with it anymore. When did Caroline start to work with you? Uh, I think it was probably three years ago. She started right. as one for one day a, a week, and yeah. then it was two days, and now she's doing three days. Uh, and I when, I, when she started, I was doing five days, and now I'm doing four days. So. And how, how do you like that? <laughs> 
actually it's worked out really well. I had an assistant very early on and actually I didn't do them any, any great benefit at all because I didn't, uh, I think I just saw them as being in the way actually. But not this time. Not this time, no. No, no I actually enjoy, uh, you know, she's uh, interested in the subject very fully. Her approach is slightly different from mine. Which is nice. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so, you know, she's trying to... After 40 years. She's trying to bring me round to her way of thinking and I'm trying to bring her round to my way of thinking. So we are in for some creative <laughs> new development. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you see as the role of a garden fellow, Michael? I've never asked you this after all this year, but... Uh, no, well, perhaps I you should have done. I might be surprised. Um, well, I mean, I see them as a way of communicating uh, my or our gardening ideas to the governing body. I mean, that's where yeah. if, if you want to have something done that mm -hmm. is structural or significant or cost money or something, then it has to have, uh, that's when approval, centralised approval is, is necessary. So okay. in I'm that aware way, now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, there are some things, there are some things which would never have happened if I hadn't, convinced somebody in a position to give yeah. the go-ahead that it was worth doing. Otherwise, you can just have, you know, we can all have uh, brilliant ideas, but if you can't actually, execute. if you don't have the means to put them into, yeah, yeah. as you say, to execute them, then what's the, 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 yeah. there's no, not much yeah. point to them, you know. Yeah. So, well, Morella, you asked me what uh, my view of the Garden Fellow is, so uh, perhaps I can ask you what your view is, what, uh, what is the role? Um, well, I, I go and have lunch with you every month, <laughs> for a start. <laughs> um, well, that's not a sufficient uh, thing. Uh, that is not sufficient, no. That was just a joke. <laughs> um, and then I think I agree with you that it's, it's good to have a, a, a point of discussion about your plans and then see if they should be brought to GB as a paper for discussion, um, yeah. we've, which we've done on some occasions and um, provide support if, if you need that to, for a certain um, plan or event or whatever. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, just at, at a level of um, moral support, I think. Is yeah, the, moral support. Yeah, that's uh, not practical. I don't well, think yeah. I'm allowed practical support. Well, no, that's not quite true, actually, because I've got a picture here of... Oh, um, yes, yes, yes. You yes, might recognise this picture. Years ago. So this, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a picture of, uh, <coughs> yeah. of you planting the, uh, the cedar, cedar, tree. Uh, cedar of Lebanon. Yeah. Um, this was in, in April 2017. I don't know if you're aware of this, but... Um, uh, this was a ceremonial planting which you were conducting as yes, garden fellow. But what you might not be aware of was that uh, after, this was planted at noon and uh, over lunch I had uh, slight second thoughts about um, the planting depth that you had put the tree in. I mean, uh -huh. I had dug the hole, but nonetheless it didn't seem to be quite deep enough for my liking. And also I didn't like the way that the tree was pointing towards the building. I felt it should be pointing away from the building. Right. Again, on reflection. And I thought, well, if I'm going to do anything about this, I better do it fairly smartly. So after lunch, I went out into the garden. You did. <laughs> I did. You did. I did. And uh, I dug it out because uh, I thought, well, nobody's going to notice me doing it. And anyway, just as I was replanting it, um, no. a lady leant over the hedge and introduced herself as the, uh, the writer of the newsletter for the ROQ mm -hmm. next door. And she said, do I, do, did I mind if, I took, if she took a photograph of me planting the tree? You've never shown that to me. <laughs> I'm a little upset now, Michael. Um, no, I, I know. Well, I, had to, I, am an, I, I do try to be honest with you about <laughs> it. So anyway, it's still your tree, you know, and it, you, still, you did plant it temporarily. I don't think it's my tree, because I didn't. <laughs> well, no, actually, it belongs, it, really, it belongs to this lady who's overlooking yeah. the planting, uh, uh, Jenny Turner. Who, who's sadly no longer with us, but uh, yeah. yeah, I mean there was a, that's uh, this tree actually replaced some birch trees which she had her husband had sponsored that's, years before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so there's. A, so I think we need to plant another one. <laughs> <laughs> now that well, on the other side, this. well, no, there already was another tree there because this is your 
well, your tree. I call it your tree just to make, <laughs> you, make you feel better. And, and this is the previous one that I planted oh, about 35 years earlier, yeah. which was sponsored by Brian Bauer, who was the first garden fellow, actually. Oh, the first? Okay. Yeah, well, he was chairman of the garden so committee. So there's always been a garden fellow? Well, there was a garden committee. Even a committee? There was a full committee at one time. How did that go? Um, well, it was very good because we met every term. There were a lot of interested parties yeah. who, who attended. Um, but they, um, they, la they, went, they dropped from being once a term to once a year. And then it lapsed. And then it went from being a garden committee chairman to a garden fellow. Right. Um, yeah. Which has worked fine. But yeah. this, this, so this, the first seed of Lebanon, which is quite magnificent now, um, that was sponsored by, this is the original sheet. Um, let me see, what does it say? Trees which have been or are being planted in the gardens to whose cost fellows of college are invited to subscribe. Yeah, um, I don't know if they're, they're, anyway, so Brian Bauer, whose signature is against this yeah. cedar of Lebanon, paid uh, the handsome price of six pounds to, wow. to, to buy that tree. Yeah, which was about the same size as the one that you were planting when it went in. So yeah. I've got to wait 30 years. Yeah. Well, thank you, Michael. I've really enjoyed our chat. I hope, Michael, that we can soon re resume our lunches uh, together in the observ observatory uh, because I've really missed them over the COVID lockdown period. It's always been such a joy to walk through the gardens with you. You're so knowledgeable about the college and the plants. I've, I always come away with something new. Well, thank you for your, your mm. compliments and your confidence, uh, Morella. Uh, yes, I think actually you're the first garden fellow that I've actually had a sort of regular lunch with. So that's, uh, <laughs> and that's I something I, that you've introduced uh, <laughs> to thought, the role. I thought it was standard to the role. <laughs> yeah. 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 Good. Thank you. So and thank you for this nice chat. And I hope we can enjoy the gardens many years to yeah, come. I'm sure we can. Thank you.